Now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what Indians are all about. I still say we Indian people are believers in the truth. This is the way of life that was given to your people. You born an Indian, you're going to die an Indian. Indianness is a good life. You're facing an Indian this afternoon. Good Saturday afternoon out there, everyone, and welcome to your number one source for Native American television news, Native News Today. I'm your host, Jason Salzman, here in the Muskogee Media Studios as we get ready for this week's episode. Lots of great things to share with you this week. Lots of things happening out there, lots of news uh, happening, lots of people that we will be featuring this week doing wonderful things. And it all starts off, I've got a special treat for you folks. No commercials this week, a commercial-free episode of Native News Today. Today we're going to get right into our stories and our first feature takes us down the interstate out west towards Oklahoma City, the American Indian Cultural Center and Museum. Definitely been in the news for the last several years trying to get that museum up and going. They have taken their next step, a big step, which is naming their new director and that is Kaw and Muskogee Creek Indian James Pepper Henry. We had the great privilege to travel over to Oklahoma City to talk with him about his new position. Well, it's a very exciting moment for me. I've been involved with this project vicariously for over 15 years and uh, worked for the National Museum of the American Indian at the time we uh, wrote and signed a loan agreement to loan items from the Smithsonian to the project and uh, now it's a little bit ironic to uh, be the executive director of the Cultural Center um, and then receiving objects uh, through the Smithsonian for loan when we open uh, from an agreement that I, I wrote uh, years ago. Well first of all uh, I am American Indian. I'm an enrolled member of the Kaw Nation of Oklahoma, and I'm also Muscogee Creek. I've got a little bit of Chickasaw blood as well. And uh, I lived in Oklahoma over 20 years ago. I helped the Kaw Nation start its tribal museum back in the uh, mid-90s. And then I, I went off to the Smithsonian to help build the National Museum of the American Indian. Was there for 10 years, helped move the collections from New York to the facility in Suitland, Maryland, and then helped uh, with the construction and the uh, opening of the National Museum of the American Indian on the National Mall in, in D.C. And then from there I went on to other uh, projects. I worked for the Anchorage Museum in Anchorage, Alaska as their executive director. Worked on a $110 million expansion of that facility, uh, another uh, about 80,000 square feet. And then from there, I went on to one of the nation's great American Indian museums, the Heard Museum in Phoenix, Arizona. Was the executive director there for a few years and helped evolve that organization. And then had a chance to come back to Oklahoma, to the Gilcrease Museum in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And Gilcrease is one of the great American museums and helped them with a campaign to uh, secure funding for a major expansion of Gilcrease Museum, uh, $65 million to upgrade that facility. And, uh, and then had the opportunity uh, to come here to the Cultural Center, again a project that I've been uh, looking at for many years uh, vicariously and now to be the executive director of, of this organization uh, is very exciting for me and helping get the facility up and running. And uh, we saw a little video earlier today talking about the mission of this organization and there is a strong educational component not just for our citizens here in Oklahoma, uh, the 39 tribes that are here, rich uh, cultural heritage, um, but a lot of people in our own state don't know much about the tribes in Oklahoma. So this will serve as an educational resource for uh, greater Oklahoma, but also 
we have an, a, an opportunity to educate the rest of the world about the tribes here in Oklahoma. And the fact that this facility is located at what we call the crossroads of America, the intersections of Interstate 35, Interstate 40, and Interstate 44, it's a perfect location uh, right in the middle of America to educate the rest of our country and visitors from around the world about the rich cultures of our tribes right here in Oklahoma. The nonprofit world uh, is a challenge uh, to begin with. Anybody's worked in for nonprofits and uh, to raise money. In this in this particular case, uh, the, it's a combination of public and private dollars that are helping uh, to get this organization off the ground and get the facility built. So, uh, in my experience, you know, I, I've worked with very similar projects where where uh, there's a private entity that helps manage a public facility, and that's going to going to be the case here. So. Having that experience, bringing that here, uh, I think will help the project. And then working on uh, construction projects and expansion projects and coming in in the middle of this one, I think there's some opportunity now that, uh, again, the designs are, are over 10 years old now, the facility and technologies changed, the, the way we think about uh, cultural centers and heritage centers have changed a little bit. So there may be some opportunity uh, to have a little bit of influence on changing, tweaking the design slightly uh, without affecting the budget too much. Uh, and then getting things up and operational. And I certainly have experience running organizations and building organizations and uh, glad that it's worked out this way that, uh, you know, coming back after 20 some years back to Oklahoma and bringing all of that experience uh, that I've gained over the years and putting it uh, to use for this facility. So I, I think that's a great opportunity not only for me, but uh, I think uh, I'll be able to help get this uh, cultural center up and running here in the next few years. This institution right now, uh, in its mission, is not a collecting institution, so we're borrowing collections from other organizations and individuals and tribes, but, but we've already been approached by people who want to give collections to the museum. So uh, as we get into operational mode, we're going to develop a collecting plan and hopefully work with other organizations. Uh, the State Historical Society is just down the road and we don't have uh, a, a, a collections manager at this time, but we may be able to uh, collaborate with the State Historical Society uh, in, in developing our collecting policies and maybe they would be a temporary repository for some things that people would like to donate. But we know it's going to happen and anytime you have a new facility, people get excited and they want to uh, contribute and we will develop a, a collecting plan and what that collecting plan looks like uh, I think at least we will focus on the 39 tribes here in Oklahoma but we may uh, move beyond that. One thing I think that I can say for certain is that uh, we probably will not be interested in collecting and housing archaeological items and uh, for a very important reason because many archaeological sites are grave sites and we don't want to endorse or promote uh, the, the disturbing or the disruption of an eternal resting place and that's uh, we are uh, going to be a museum and cultural center of living culture we need to respect the beliefs and the traditions of the tribes here in Oklahoma and most tribes uh, including my own tribe have very strong feelings about uh, the disturbing of, of sacred places like graves. So um, we're, we'll be focusing on the historic period and then also contemporary uh, art and artifacts. And uh, uh, I think one of, one of the mandates that we will have here at the Cultural Center when, when we're open is to support living native artists and be able to pro promote contemporary native art here at the Cultural Center. This center has been coming for a long time. It's, it's been an idea for well over 20 years. And, and the location uh, that it's built at now, I think is perfect. It's very accessible to anybody around the state and around the country, or around the world for that matter. Um, but it's been a dream of, of many people uh, for a couple generations now to see this come to fruition. And I'm glad to be here at this point in time. And you know, things happen for a reason, I, I believe that. And, and we've got great leadership for the institution here. And so uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's meant to be at this time for it to happen now. 
and again to be a resource not only for all the tribes here in Oklahoma and a gathering place for all of the 39 tribes and people to exchange cultures with each other but also to share that culture uh, with the rest of the people of our state and our region and the country. And our congratulations once again to Mr. Pepper Henry there and I uh, want to thank him for the time uh, giving us uh, there that day after the board of directors meeting in which he was confirmed and I uh, wish him nothing but the best of luck in that new position as we hope for the best for the American Indian Cultural Center Museum there in Oklahoma City. Well, back here around our neck of the woods at Muscogee Creek Nation, lots happening as the latest and I believe last uh, round of grand openings and now we are finished at the River Spirit Resort Casino, the uh, one that has created a lot of buzz and it's because the pool is now ready. We were there as they cut the ribbon on the new pool, the cabanas, all of that area now taking shape and that resort casino, uh, Margaritaville really is all basically, it ties the bow on everything. You know, it was a big center, uh, lots of different parts of it. Now this uh, basically just completes that. We were so glad to be there and invited for this big ceremony. This is a great day. This is the frosting on the cake of our phase two expansion project here at River Spirit. Uh, this is the final piece of the resort facility, which is the, the pool deck, the tiki bar, tiki dining, land shark, and also the opening of the River Parks Trail that comes back along the river and behind the hotel casino. This, this, this project has had a significant impact on not only the city and the region, but and, and it will have in the future, and it, it is already, but in the future it will be a great asset and it will produce a lot of in income and distributions to the nation. We're, we, we were at a competitive dis disadvantage for a number of years competing in the market here. Now we're no longer at a disadvantage. We're, we're, we're the top dog in the market right now, and the customers are recognizing it and they're coming here, and we're, we're bringing in a lot of people from outside of the area. We're not just not just competing locally here, but this is a true regional destination resort. I was here in phase one and all through phase two. This is great. I mean, this is, this is, this is a, a great day for me and, and for the nation. It's not just, not, certainly not all about me. It's about the project and, and the nation and all the people that have worked on this, but it is. It's a, it's a great feeling of, of, you know, finally getting it all done. So we really appreciate the Muscogee Creek Nation, the council and the administration, you know, trusting us to make this investment because it, it will be a great return to the nation. And our thanks again to all the folks up there at River Spirit Casino Resort and uh, all the great people there making it happen, putting on a big event. Very much excited about that, as well as the folks that are staying uh, in that great facility now. You can go down to the pool, swim up to the old cabanas, ha hang out, uh, have a great time there. So it's going to be a wonderful addition to the operations Muscogee Creek Nation is running up there along the river in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Well, we make, we're making big news here at home base at Muscogee Creek Nation this week as well. I talked with the Muscogee Creek Nation Secretary of the Nation and Commerce, Mr. Elijah McIntosh, about a big new partnership that he was wanting to uh, announce from the Muscogee Creek Nation with Tinker Federal Credit Union. What this is going to do is provide financial literacy courses as well as the access uh, to membership of Tinker Federal Credit Union, the largest federal credit union in the state of Oklahoma. A great partnership for Creek Nation, and we talked with him about it this week. Tinker Federal Credit Union, they've been around since 1946. They're uh, $3.5 billion in assets, and 
one of the things that drove this is that uh, in discussions with Chief Floyd, one of the things that he really wanted me to do was to develop a financial literacy program, both for the summer youth program and for adult citizens as well. Um, Chief Floyd is very passionate about financial literacy. He believes it's key um, for our citizens going forward and he really wants them to be educated. In doing that, we uh, assessed what options were available, whether to develop in-house or to seek an outside entity to help provide that. And calling around one of the services that Tinker Federal offers is they have financial literacy training classes that are already in place. They have a financial literacy program within the credit union. And so they've actually started, um, even before the agreement was in place, providing financial literacy during the summer youth orientation classes. So during that time, for about approximately one hour, we're already providing financial literacy to the youth. Um, and the discussions that I've had recently, it's going very well. The summer youth have been very responsive to it. Um, the classes that they provide, provide real world scenarios, which I think is very helpful. Um, it's actual cases where they look at housing costs, car costs, and what the outcome of making those decisions are. And so the feedback I've got from that has been um, very positive from what they're already providing. And so we're looking to incorporate that into the summer youth program overall throughout the summer, in addition to a savings program. Um, another thing that Tinker offers, in addition to that, for the adults out there, the parents and adult citizens in general, is they have financial advisors that they have. In addition to, um, they have what's known as, uh, it's called Balance, and it's a website where citizens can go to if they um, so choose to take that route and they can go in there and they can do um, get financial advisement through that or through a phone number if they want if they don't want to sit down in a one-on-one -on -one interview um, in addition as part of the partnership we uh, all citizens and employees are open to join the credit union and become members of the credit union and so in doing so it opens them up to the full um, benefits package of being a Tinker Federal Credit Union member one of the things that Tinkers offers uh, throughout the state is they're a big player in the um, financing car loans. And so in order to do that, you have to have one of the most competitive rates out there. And so they're generally much lower than their competitors. And so that's one thing that opens it up to our citizens is they can get a lower rate on a car loan if they qualify for the car loan, but it, the opportunity is there. And so that's one of the things this partnership does is it opens it up to them. I believe getting an early start, um, in particular for our um, younger citizens, uh, I think that we all know that if you can make good decisions early on, it can make a big difference in your life down the road. Um, I think we all see the stories of the student loan debt that the millennials, when they get out of college now, they're being swamped with student loan debt. And so hopefully some education early on can help them mitigate uh, the amount of student loan debt that they get and so that can be a very positive response to it as well. In addition to that, um, some of the younger members, even the ones that go to work, if they can still make smart decisions when they're young. For instance, I went to work um, for several years and was in the military prior to going to college and so I know what it was like to be young and be out on you know, your own and making your own decisions and so sometimes you get credit card debt and there's also payday loans that are out there. If we can help them avoid those traps and avoid getting in debt very early on in their life, it can set them up for success later on in life. And that's one of our key goals in uh, doing this. I think most people are familiar with what a bank does. A credit union is very similar. One of the differences is that it's a nonprofit. And so the members of the credit union, they actually own the credit union and they're considered the shareholders and they're able to vote on the board of directors. Um, it's ran by a volunteer board of directors and a supervisory committee. So they're not paid for the work that they do. And so they really work for the membership as a whole. And that's where becoming a member of a credit union, that's where it plays into that. When you um, join a credit union, and that's why they're called members and not customers, is because they're a part owner. Um, it requires you to put down what's known as a par share. 
and in, for in Tinker's case, that's a $5 deposit. And so when you get your statement, it'll show up as um, unavailable. And so if you have $100 in that account, it'll show $95 in the account. And that's because $5, that's your par share amount. It's not, um, it's not something that they keep. If you close your account, then you get the $5 back. And so it's not something that you're paying to them to join, but it is something you have to have on deposit in order to have access to the other benefits. Right now, we're, they're just doing them for the summer youth orientation. Uh, we are still planning on an event early on in the summer for the first payday for the summer youth to have training classes during that time. We're gonna be doing at the Dome here in Okmulgee, um, and that's on June 16th. In addition to that, they're gonna have customer service reps here, or I guess I should say member service reps here. And so for our adults as well that aren't part of the summer youth program, they can still come and talk to member service representatives and they'll have people on site to open accounts at that time. Um, the closest branch we have within the jurisdiction is in Tulsa. And so members are available to go into there in, in addition to the various branches they have throughout the state to join. Yes, if they want to get in contact with Tinker, they have their website. It's tinkerfcu.org. They also have an 800 number at 800-456-4828. We also have a customer service representative, Casey Mock. Her phone number is 405-319-2184. And uh, our citizens can talk, contact the credit union through any of those methods. And our thanks again to Secretary McIntosh there breaking down that agreement for us and really uh, uh, obtaining that agreement with Tinker Federal Credit Union. It's going to be a wonderful thing, I think, and uh, something to look forward to. As we said in the story, if you missed it, June 16th, it's a tentative date on an event they have uh, that's going to be coming up. So keep your eyes and ears open on uh, for, with us and the paper, muskogeemedia.com, for all of that. Well. Keep your eyes and ears open as well in the Tulsa area tonight for the fourth year, the firefighters in Tulsa and the policemen getting together to put on smoke and guns. It is a, a charity event where both uh, organizations, the firefighters and the policemen, and it's from all over, not just Tulsa, but those are who coordinated, uh, coordinated it. Uh, they get together basically representing each of them, each side representing a charity. It all goes for a great cause, including the Special Olympics. And one of our very own, a Muskogee Creek Tulsa fighter, Xavier McNack, stopped with us to talk about this great event coming up tonight. All right, I'm so glad to be joined now with Xavier McNack. He is a Muskogee Creek citizen, a Tulsa firefighter, and this Saturday he is a cage fighter because they are having the fourth annual Smoke and Guns event. Xavier, tell us a little bit about this event coming up this uh, tonight at the BOK Center. Um, it's our fourth time we've uh, put the show on. We've uh, grown, grown. We started uh, small, mm -hmm. and now we're at the BOK Center, the biggest event center in Tulsa. Um, it's gone really well. We're giving back uh, $90,000 of charity. Uh, it's a 100 percent charity organization we have a 501c3 um, but we just put a police officer and a firefighter in the cage every fight mm -hmm. and the winner gets a point towards their side whoever has the most wins at the end of the night gets 60 percent donated to the charity of choice loser gets 40 percent either way everything is all uh, charity so yeah. it either it, into the event or to the charity nobody makes any money yeah and you guys uh, it's a group of you guys that sort of had this idea put it together yes sir there's oh. four of us total yeah. <clears throat> there's uh dustin fletcher mm -hmm. uh myself Matt Condry and Jason Pillars. Awesome. Now, um, I imagine that it's pretty, you know, it's a brotherhood really with uh, firefighters, any first responders really, but firefighters and policemen. Uh, and it's interesting now that you kind of get in the cage and mix it up, but it's for a great cause. And I know you guys have a lot of fun with it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, um, it's a rivalry there between us. I mean, we tease each other and make jokes like on scene and it's always kind of a running deal. But yeah, we do love each other 100%. I mean, we all work together hand in hand all the time. Mm -hmm. And this is a time that, I mean, there's always little things that, you know, we put together and uh, this is one of those deals where we can all go out and have a good time. You know, Xavier, like you said, it, it is for charity. There are two charities that are being, uh, that, that this can go to. Now, um, you, you guys started it four years ago and like you said, kind of 
crawl before you walk, you test it out, you've gotten to a bigger venue. So this has been something that's been successful. Uh, and I know that you guys are really excited to see what it does this year, but it has some, been something that's really caught on and, and it's well attended. Yes, absolutely. Um, we're hoping this year between six to 8,000 people in the stands. Wow. Uh, we've uh, almost sold out all of our floor tables. I think we have like two left, um, but the general admission is just first come, first serve. And um, I keep the prices low. It's uh, like $22. To, for a general admission seat. Mm -hmm. If you go to any uh, mixed martial arts fight anywhere, it's $45 and up. Okay. So I keep my keep my uh, my prices low. Wonderful. Yeah, and everybody, <clears throat> family can come out, check Absolutely. it out. Uh, really fun for the kids and everything like that, just to see something that you're not used to, man. You know, take them to uh, a basketball game, a circus here and there, but you know, go and see the policemen and firefighters mix it up. That's yeah. gonna be a great time. What time does everything start tonight there at the BOK Center? Uh, doors at six, shows at seven. And uh, we put on a great show. It's um, it's for the fight novice is what I like to say. Okay. It's for, uh, you're not going to watch Joe the striker versus Mike the, the, grap uh, the grappler. It's mm -hmm. um, We just put on a good show. It's all amateur fights. Everybody has a good time. And Kind of tough fun. man contest in a cage right <laughs> yeah, there, huh? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those, got, those got a little bit uh, crazy, though. That, yeah, they get a little crazy, but I mean, <laughs> the, it's a fight, so you, I mean, there could be some blood, could right. be some gore, it'd be a, but it's all, it's all fun. Everybody has a good time. We're all trained athletes. Um, that's the thing, is it's not just some, you know, hillbilly off the street, right. I mean, that, which is the tough man contest. Exactly, yeah. We are all trained fighters. I mean, nobody takes a mixed martial arts fight right. tomorrow just because. This right, is a, right. all guys that, uh, have uh, experience in the sport and have built it in Jiu Jitsu or have Muay Thai background or everybody has their own thing that they bring into it. So. Serious game. Absolutely. All right, Xavier, we want to wish you the best of luck in Thank your you. fight, uh, as well as uh, I guess you're a Muskogee Creek citizen. So mm -hmm. our official stance at Native News today, we're going to get behind team firefighters. We're going to be pulling for those firefighters That's out right, there. Guys. I I'm hope not. our light horsemen aren't listening. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, come on out. It's like, like I said, it's uh, one now. You have lots of time to get out still. Uh, I'm sure there'll be tickets at the door. Absolutely. So you get out there, six o'clock doors open. Eight o'clock, uh, we uh, get to fighting and getting the gloves going. Oh, wait, no, seven. Sorry, oh, seven o'clock. I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, seven o'clock is when the fights get going. Uh, I don't know what time will you be going on. Do you know? Um, I'm actually time? the first fight. First fight. Yeah. So don't channel. be late. Don't do not be late. Get out there and uh, uh, support our Muskogee Creek citizen here, our Tulsa firefighter. Well, buddy, thanks for being with us today. We love having you here, and uh, best of luck to you. Keep yourself uh, careful out there at all Absolutely. times. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you, sir. All right, you bet. And that'll do it for the, another episode of Native News Today. We want to thank everybody out there for joining us this week here on our T Tulsa CW family, our viewing area. Also, we want to uh, remind you, if you're watching us on YouTube, tell a friend, tell a loved one, tell a neighbor about our online channel. Click that red button, subscribe. You'll have access to all of our videos, even the archive uh, that is being updated weekly by our very own Jared Moore doing a wonderful job with that, as well as all of our videos on demand. If you don't want to cut through if you don't want to watch an entire episode, cut right to a story that you are interested in. We're providing those as well. And we're linked up with the all new MuskogeeMedia.com. And some exciting news uh, to give you this week. Our newsletter is now available, Muskogee Media. Uh, if you go to MuskogeeMedia.com, there'll be more information on that. Essentially, you subscribe uh, basically to the newsletter. You'll get things every week. You'll get our news, news making headlines, everything that we're putting out that we want you to be aware of as Muskogee Creek citizens, as Native American citizens in general, dealing with us here on Native News Today. So it's a wonderful thing. We're so glad to be able to roll it out. And we want to remind you that that's available as well as all of our social media sites, things to keep up with, uh, lots of things going on there as well for Muskogee Media. Well, I'm Jason Salzman. Like I said, everybody have a great week. We'll see you next time right here on Native News Today.